Hanna Mom Tokativity Social. My name is Casey Weiser. I am Chief Operating Officer of Tokativity and a Canna Mom. 
My journey to motherhood wasn't easy. I was diagnosed with PCOS and struggled to conceive for many years. I finally became pregnant, but was riddled with hypermensis. I was sick every day, all day for 37 weeks, but cannabis got us through this by helping me eat and keep food down. I self-medicated every day throughout pregnancy and into breastfeeding. I am now, or I now have my healthy, compassionate, smart, athletic twin boys, Silas and Miles. I am here to normalize cannabis for mothers around the world. Before we get started, we would like to acknowledge the stolen land we reside on at HQ here in Portland, Oregon and in the United States. We would also like to acknowledge the generations of indigenous plant medicine teachers, women, mothers, witches, allies, and those who have been impacted by the most impacted most by the drug war. All of those whom have continued the legacy of cannabis and plant medicine, despite the toxic patriarchal and er, 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 sorry, <laughs> of culture and ancient knowledge. The full land acknowledgement can be found on the reception page here inside the event. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're broadcasting live to our social channels right now from the main stage inside our digital event. For those of you who would like to connect with the community live during this event, you can RSVP free at tokativity.com slash events and get all the login info to join the fun. Today, we are giving away a 300 travel gift card from Front Row Travels, along with $150 worth of Tokativity gift certificates, good for membership, advertising, and sponsorships. And we will be announcing the winner of our Glass Cardinal CBD basket giveaway, worth $550. There is still time to enter. Head over to tokativity.com slash Glass Cardinal to enter to win. You do have to be inside our digital event to be present to win. If you are watching from one of our social accounts, you can register for free at our website. Um, again, it's still have time to enter tokativity.com slash glass cardinal to enter to win. On our main stage today, we will be kicking things off with a message from our presenting sponsor, Sweet Jane Magazine followed by the State of the Cannamom Movement, a panel moderated by Daniel Simone Brand, author of Weed Mom. The all-star list of panelists include Bianca Schneider, a, found, a founder of High Society Mama and Society Plant, C. Simone Pafon, founder of Kun Pu Inc., Deshita Dawson, founder of the Weed Head and Company. We'll then be connecting with Katie Isben and Barbara Platts from Sweet Jane Mag on how to become a cannabis journalist. If you've ever wondered how to write for a publication or break into cannabis, this one is for you. We will also be hosting interactive sessions, including Bridges, a courageous conversation about race, equity, and inclusion, talking about the unique journey of Black canna moms with Miss Kindness B. Ramirez, founder of Our Kind and Club Kindness, and Tiffany Watkins, founder of Vanguard Media Online. You can also tap into our session with the Mommy Jane on navigating cannabis and social media. There is something for everyone here, whether you are looking to connect with canna moms or thinking about how motherhood and cannabis weave into your world or want to tap into the canna mom vibes. If you love cannabis and connection, this event is for you. We want to share a huge thank you to our collaborators and sponsors to this event. Huge thank you to our presenting sponsor, Sweet Jane Magazine. Our brand partners, Kite, Sacred Garden, Thrice, Kindly Pendleton, and Sensi Magazine for your support and dedication to the liberation of women throughout cannabis. Also, Danielle Simone Brand, Weed Mom, High Society Mama, Society Plant, Kun Pu Inc., The Weed Head and Company, Club Kindness, Vanguard Media Online, A Green Legacy, The Mommy Jane, Mob Nation, Front Row Travels, 
International Consulting Business Women's Association, Oaksterdam University, High Herstory, Oregon Cannabis Association, Women Leaders in Cannabis, Cannabis Travel Association, Women Employed in Cannabis, The Bluntness, The Cannamom Show, Liquid Culture, and Mary Jane's Women of Weed Film. And of course, last but not least, our community contributors, which anyone can do at any time when you RSVP to our events. April Becker Machio, Genesis Rita, Beryl Solomon, Presley Puffs, and Diane Foote. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna have Lisa Snyder, our co-founder, join us for some exciting announcements we want to share with you before we get into our event. Hi, Lisa. Hi, you're doing so awesome. And I'm just so excited to be here with all of you today. This is like one of the most magical moments um, of our entire month is our Tokativity Socials. And our Canon Mom Social, hands down, is so unique and so special. And we just love it so much. So thank you, uh, Casey, for all that amazing um, info. And I'm really excited to kick things off here. But first, we have a few announcements, Tokativity related announcements. I want to let you know, first of all, we have soft launch our Tokativity creative agency. It is a collective that offers work on dialing in audiences for brands, engagement strategies, dope content creation, creative campaigns, giveaways, and super new and exciting, which I'm personally stoked about NFTs um, and NFT consulting. So um, we're excited to help get you and your brand uh, more exposure and visibility. So if you have a brand or product that you want folks to know about, let us know. Contact us through our website, tokativity.com slash collaborate. Another special announcement. Today is the very last day to get $100 off on our cannabis social media program in collaboration with the Mommy Jane. This is special for cannapreneurs and creative professionals who are looking to next level their social media expertise. It's called The Mommy Jane's Guide to Becoming a Cannabis Social Media Influencer. It is a book and video series with over 85 pages and over 70 videos of content based on a combination of years of experience in the social media space, helping you navigate all the hard stuff so you don't have to spend years figuring it out like we did. Um, today's the very last day to get the special deal. It's $100 off the entire program um, automatically when you order it through our website. And it is available starting today, which I'm so excited about. For anybody who's already ordered it, I know a bunch of you have. I'll be sending you a special email after the Cannamom social so we can get this party started. So visit tokatv.com slash um, Or for you, if you're here in the live event and you're watching this live, we will put the link in the chat box. But you definitely want to be a part of this program with us. We are going to give away all of our secrets. I know some of you are definitely struggling with how do you figure out all this cannabis stuff? How do you like avoid getting kicked off Instagram and all that jazz? We'll be talking about all of it. And every single person that joins the program and um, the launch of this program will get free creative pro workshops for the rest of the year. So we will be doing these monthly workshops and you'll be working sometimes with me, sometimes with Samantha, sometimes with Jesse, and sometimes some of our other creative professionals in our network to teach you some really important skills that we all hope get um, more cannabis normalization going and flowing. And we know how that changes minds and hearts. Um, another announcement here, we also upgraded our membership. We have now five opportunities to get involved um, as a member, starting with brand partnership for brands who want to make a splash, business members for those who are, want speaking and networking opportunities, a new tier for creative professionals who want to tap into our network, and grassroots for those who want to dip a toe and get access to our resources um, as well as basic membership, which is free, totally free for those who just want to get on the invite list to our special events. We just announced our first in-person event um, since 2020. So if you're on our member list, you definitely got that email earlier today. Um, if you want to upgrade your membership, we have a special Canamom social coupon code for you. It's Canamom25 for 25% off of all of our membership upgrades that's monthly or annual or anything like that. It helps make all of this stuff happen. We have a ton of support from our sponsors, but everything we do in between the events is really how um, that all gets done and we get that support from our members. So thank you so much for your support. And um, I see a bunch of you online already and um, thank you so much for that. Make sure to stop by our photo booth. This is such a fun thing and it's fun in the digital. Um, so stop by there for a chance to be featured on our social media. It is available in the expo booth. 
Um, we'll also be plugging it into our chat box. So those of you who are interacting inside today's event, check the schedule on the left-hand side under reception to see what else is going on here inside of the event. So thank you, everybody. Love you. And thanks, Sweet J Magazine, again, for your support. And Casey, you're a badass MC. Love you. Thank you. Love you. Uh, yes, thank you, Sweet Jane, um, for your ongoing support. This isn't the first time you have sponsored something. Uh, Sweet Jane is the briefing on all things cannabis for women and mothers. Their media brand is founded and run by female journalists who believe that cannabis education is the road to legalization. They are embedded in female and mother parent centric circles that are actively discussing cannabis access, well being, and equity. Sweet Jane covers topics on parenting, cannabis wellness, inspiring women within equity, um, inspiring women equity within cannabis, how to grow cannabis, removing stigma, and empowering mothers to care for themselves. Katie Isman, the founder of Sweet Jane Magazine, and her business pumps partner and editor of Sweet Jane, Barbara Platts, will be sharing here later today about how to become a cannabis journalist, and you don't want to miss that. Right now, I'd like to bring Katie up for a few minutes so she can share more about Sweet Jane with us. Hi. Hi. Hi, Katie. Hi, Barbara. Hello. Thank you, Casey and Lisa and the entire Togativity team. Um, we couldn't be more excited to be presenting this event. Um, as an early adopter of the Cannamom movement, so to speak, um, Tokativity saw our vision and believed in us several years ago. And to be here today supporting you and your efforts is just the greatest feeling ever. And Casey, thank you for sharing your very personal story about your own path into motherhood and how cannabis mm -hmm. helped you. We all have one, and I'm sure today you'll be hearing of many of them um, it's something that never gets old when we talk about how much we all need to work together to normalize cannabis and especially for mothers and parents. And we definitely leaned into that with our third issue, uh, which is coming out just in another few days. Our issue three is our parenting edition and inside everyone will find lots of, um, educational content, useful content, yeah. profiles on badass women, including, Gosh, just a few of the women who are involved today, Danielle, Bianca, Jessica, Ms. Kindness, and of course, Tokativity. So if you want to read more about some of the individuals that you're going to hear from today, please pick up a copy at sweetjanemag.com. But again, we just want to, on behalf of Sweet Jane, welcome everybody. Thank all of the participants and panelists. Danielle, you've put together a badass panel. I can't wait. We have our notebooks ready to take notes. <laughs> um, and just thank you all for being here. Um, this tonight shows that we're getting closer to a place where it's accepted to be a mom and smoke weed. So thank you so much, Tokativity. Oh, and it feels so good to be at this point. Thank you for helping um, all of us with this mission on um, normalization. Absolutely. All right. Well, we'll see you ladies in a few minutes. We are now ready for our State of the Canna Mom panel. Danielle Simone Brand is our curator and moderator for today's panel. She is the author of Weed Mom, the Canna Curious Women's Guide to Healthier Relaxation, Happier Parenting, and Chillin' the F Out. She has an MA in International Peace and Conflict Resolution from the American University and a BA from Dartmouth College. Her work has been highlighted in Vice, High Times, Reader's Digest UK, and Civilized and Miss Grass. Please welcome Danielle Simone Brand. Hello. Oh, it's so good to see your face. Hi, Casey. It's so great to be here. It's so great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. We are really excited to hear from all of these women. I will uh, give the stage to you so you can introduce your panelists. Awesome. 
All right, and then you'll let them up as I introduce, I guess. They will, yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so hi, everybody. I'm Danielle Simone Brand. Thank you for that lovely introduction, Casey. Um, I'm so happy to be here because I care deeply about this plant that has literally helped and healed me on so many levels. And I know it's the same for many of you out there. Um, and I care deeply about moms. I'm a mom. I care about the mom experience, and that's what I want to talk about today. That's what we're talking about, obviously, in this State of the Canada Mom Movement panel. Uh, and to quote Leah Moore from last year's Canamom Social, she said, moms have the collective power to be one of the most pivotal voices in the movement. And for so many reasons, I agree with that. Um, and that's why I've invited these women, all moms, um, yeah, also entrepreneurs, advocates, and so much more um, to share their perspectives and to discuss sort of where we are in this Canamom movement. Um, so one of our panelists, Shanitri Anthony, is not able to join us today. We have three wonderful panelists, and I'm so excited to introduce them to you. Um, also, just FYI, I had to cut some lines out of their bios because I can't tell you everything that's amazing about them, or I would be here literally talking, <laughs> you know, reading their bios the whole time. Um, and the first person I'm going to bring up is Bianca Snyder. She is the founder of High Society Mama. Her mission is to inspire moms to be comfortable and confident with their decision to use plant medicine. In addition to being a social media and marketing genius, those are my words, by the way, but also facts, Bianca owns a seed to smoke artisanal CBD hemp brand called Society's Plant. She believes that the hemp grown on her family farm in Southwest Michigan is more than just a plant, it's Society's Plant to nurture and heal us. Welcome, Bianca. Hello, hello. <laughs> And next, I'd like to bring up Dashita Dawson. Dashita is the Weed Head TM, a global cannabis advocate, an award-winning strategist, and best-selling author of How to Succeed in the Cannabis Industry. Currently, Dashita is the Portland Cannabis Manager, overseeing all regulatory licensing, compliance, and equity initiatives for the city's legal industry. With an MBA from Rutgers and an undergrad degree from Princeton, she is also co-founder of the Cannabis Health Equity Movement, also known as CHEM, and is chair of the Cannabis Regulators of Color Coalition. Above all, Dashita is a mom and a conscious cannabis consumer. Hey, Dashita, come on up. Hey, thanks so much for being here. <laughs> and next, I'd like to bring up C. Simone Papone. She is a leader and an advocate for diversity and inclusion in the cannabis industry. She's the CEO and founder of the AAPI-inspired CBD nano emulsion brand called Kun Pu. C. Simone also provides growth strategy and consultancy for the cannabis industry through a digital marketing agency called AVO. C. Simone was previously the head of growth for cannabis manufacturer Vertosa, where she managed PR, marketing, and brand partnerships. Come on up, C. Simone. Hi. Welcome, welcome. I'm beyond thrilled that you're here with me, and let's dive in. Let's, let's get to our questions. So I'm going to direct this first question to Bianca and um, and and then the others, actually. So everyone um, is, is going to weigh in on this first question, but Bianca first. So as we know, cannabis is medically legal in 37 states. It's you know legal for adult use in 18 states plus D.C. The industry is really moving along at a fast clip. Um, and even this Mother's Day, we saw, you know, mainstream publications like the L.A. Times talking about cannabis and Shanitria, who was going to be here today, was featured in that article. And there were other mainstream articles about cannabis. So I think that this movement is obviously gaining more visibility. But of course, as we know, prohibitionist attitudes are alive and well, um, despite all that progress. So I'm, I'm wondering, from your perspective, like, where are we? Just broad strokes. What's the general pulse of the cannabis movement right now? And um, are we able to speak freely? Are more mothers coming in? And uh, next part of that question, <laughs> do skin color, sexuality, and other factors play a role in how cannabis can, you know, can be out? Go ahead, Bianca. Yeah. So I would say the current state of the cannabis movement is rapidly expanding. As more states come online, more people, more moms especially, feel a sense of freedom to finally be able to come out. And for a lot of people that I've spoke to um, through the years, that legality factor is the number one contender for them to feel comfortable with their cannabis use. And then secondarily, it's how much they've been exposed to other people to know how confident they feel talking publicly about it. 
And so I think as more and more moms start coming online, um, online in terms of um, on comes on to the cannabis movement, whether online or in person, just taking on um, consuming cannabis, we're starting to see the views shift. Although I will say that I definitely think that the views are shifting much slower for moms than for the rest of the industry. So I think that that's really the underlying factor that we have to bring in to the conversations is that mothers have a different set of challenges. And that's why the movement is so important is to help more of those moms overcome the challenges of being open about their cannabis use and not feeling guilty about it. And that's what the movement that I see is really about. And that's where we really start to grow and build that confidence as a community. And so um, I will just start outright and say that once we reach the point of normalization for mothers, that's when we know that cannabis has been normalized for all of society. So we are leading the charge um, in terms of we are going to be the last people that really feel comfortable using cannabis. And that's why it's important to have community and events like this. Absolutely. And if anyone knows about building community, it's you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Dashita, would you, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I think Bianca hit on a lot of great points. It, you know, the movement is slow. It's definitely slow compared to um, what's happening with uh, other demographics. It's uh, definitely slow when you talk about uh, black and brown moms. I, I mean, I, I was sharing with you all um, before the panel that I have been the weed head for the last six years, now going into my seventh year. But in truth, I still really didn't talk about being a mom until the last uh, two or three years. However, I've always seen it as an important segment. Um, I think as what I'm seeing now is as more areas of cannabis, as we understand the science, as we understand it as medicine and recognizing that moms, women in most households are uh, the people who are the you know deciders on what we use to heal ourselves, it will be really you know important that moms start to really adopt their usage or their understanding of cannabis based on it being inherently medicinal first. When we look at all of the adult use markets that have shifted, we're still not necessarily seeing moms because I would say most of them have not taken the health professionals, they have not taken the wellness aspects of it and really re-educated folks. And I think it's gonna be moms that do that. I've found the most conviction comes from not you know personal use for moms, but trying to solve an issue for their own children that they can't do without cannabis. And so I think um, when you have to be a caregiver uh, for your family and you're seeing either your parents dealing with all sorts of autoimmune and late stage in life issues around inflammation and you want to provide that or your children dealing with ADHD or even autism and recognize that you can provide that, it's the mom that is the, uh, the hub, right, of that wheel. And so I think the movement is just on that precipice, but I don't want to lose. And that's why I love Bianca. I love high society, mom. I don't want to lose the fact that we're allowed to have fun too. We're allowed to consume um, for fun and also for wellness, which I think fun is wellness, but it, it, it is still broadening the fact that the, the the whole family needs the medicine. And it's usually the mom that does provide that. Absolutely. Great points there. Um, you know, mom's at control 70 to 80 percent of household spending i think are the stats and absolutely when it comes to how we care for our families moms are, are really central um great great points see simone would you like to weigh in how do you see sort of the state of the canama movement right now uh, i mean um i definitely can agree that it's a slow movement <laughs> for us um i you know it it's so fun being in this industry and i love uh the panel collective that you procure, procured here because uh as you can see we're we come from so many different backgrounds right and um i would say it's slow in the fact that you know skin color does play a part in this uh you know dashita already mentioned but prior to this um she didn't want to come out as a canon mom right away and uh part of that hesitation i'm gonna assume dashita is because you're a woman of color 
And women of color are perceived differently when we're cannabis consumers, right? There's still a lot of women of color who are being um, attacked by child welfare, you know, for cannabis consumption, even if they're not putting their children at risk, right? Uh, when we look at the movement for Canada moms um, and how it's shifted, there's definitely high acceptance in terms of social. Um, and this is probably a little bit controversial, but there's more of a high acceptance for mo Canada moms who look like Danielle and Bianca, right? Versus moms that look like Dashida or myself. I probably uh, probably do a little bit better than Dashida, but you know, moms who are, are brown and black colored, they get a little more of the negative perception when they are a kind of mom and are out there. Um, I'm excited because it's shifting, right? There's a lot of shift towards acceptance for kind of moms, but there's still a lot of work to be done in acceptance of kind of moms that are of color as well. Absolutely. Yes. Thank you so much for, for talking about that because, you know, it's, that's something that, you know, as white women in the industry, we absolutely need to acknowledge, be aware of, and, you know, when it's appropriate, you know, use that privilege that we have to help push that envelope and, you know, change conversations. Um, but, you know, listening is a big part of that. And so thank you for, for speaking on it. Um, so next, I want to talk about social media because it's, you know, it's an obvious place where we look for community, obviously, right? Outside of our, you know, our living situation, our town, our city, you know, there are lots of Canada moms living in places where they don't have that in-person community. So, you know, and social media by and for Canada moms really seems to be booming right now. <laughs> That's my sense, at least, um, you know, being part of that as well. Um, so I I'm wondering, you know, what do you think the social media landscape looks like for moms, um, for Canada moms today? Um, is the online Canada mom community growing from your perspective? Um, and how does social media really impact the Canada mom movement? And uh, see, Simone, if you don't mind, we'll start with you and then we'll go to Bianca. Yeah, I, my perspective is we're killing it, right, in this game. Um, I mean, yesterday I watched Bianca and her, her TikTok video and like cannabis and stuff, and I'm just like so amazed and so excited about how unapologetic moms are being on social media, um, how we're taking up space, how we're owning it, right, uh, that we are cannabis moms, um, that it's used really to help manage our lives, have a little bit of fun, and we could still be great freaking moms here. We still can run the ship um, and not put our children at risk for all of these, you know, negative things that are put out there, especially psychologically. Um, you know, the impact that's happening with like moms like ourselves being out on social media all the time. I feel like we're birthing a whole new generation of women being unapologetic, especially moms being unapologetic about how they parent. Right. Because we get that so much, uh, so much criticism, so much judgment, no matter what we do, whether we're pouring a glass of wine in front of our kids or we're lighting up a joint on the balcony. Um, we get so much judgment for anything. And I, I really think we're killing it. We're out there. We're owning it. We're unapologetic about it. And we're taking up space that we deserve. And so I love it. Keep it going. I love to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that perspective. Um, Bianca. Yeah, so I'm going to bring up the legality thing one more time because I've especially noticed that in in the like East Coast, how many more can moms are coming online? And as the community is growing, we're just getting stronger and fiercer and we're learning more about how to support each other and what the challenges are. Because we're all create like there's so many people creating the social media to talk about it, but now we have opened this space where we can commune in all these different ways. We have our Canamom Clubhouse, um, High Society Clubhouse on Sundays, where we all meet and we cover all sorts of different subjects, and we get to talk and use our voices to communicate, which we don't get on that same interaction on social media, but. There's these different ways that connect us. And the more that we lean into those and the more that we leverage our community for strength and confidence and more ways to say things. I mean, when I said that, you know, moms can change the future of cannabis on a clubhouse last spring and Leah heard it and she came on here and then she made that and now it just keeps getting repeated because it it means something we're creating a movement and we need those like sound bites of 
like, you know, we hear over and over again that um, mommy needs a joint should be just as common as mommy needs a glass of wine. But we come up with new catchphrases and new reasons by talking together and we can amplify those. And so it's so exciting to be part of this ground floor of this community because we're evolving. The industry is evolving. Our cannabis use is evolving. You know, people are becoming more accepting of using, like I have a hemp brand and smokable hemp and it's opening the doors to these other cannabinoids with these conversations. So we're learning from each other and that's how we grow is by learning, experiencing, talking about it. And that's what these platforms bring. You're right. You're right. And that's something that I have um, sort of new appreciation for, to be honest. <laughs> I wasn't on Instagram for a long time and I was on Facebook, but it's a really different feeling on Facebook. And the yeah, the Canamom movement is actually moving forward. You can see that like week by week over week on Instagram. I think that that's super interesting. And there are other platforms too. And I know we could s talk about this for a whole hour um, as we could all these questions, but I'd like to keep moving and um, and moving to Dashita now. I I'm, I'm interested in what you're seeing um, in sort of broad terms about access right now. Um, as we know, cannabis is you know, I mean, in cannabis access is a perpetual issue because, um, you know, a long term prohibition, prohibition still remains in a bunch of states. Um, but, you know, obviously we've had big gains in recent years. And Bianca just mentioned some East Coast states coming online, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, obviously not, you know, legal markets yet open in all those places. But just this this movement is, is you know, gathering momentum. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, what does access look like right now and have any new barriers to access cropped up? recently. Now, Danielle, when you talk about access, are you talking specifically about access in terms of the plant as a consumer or as an entrepreneur? Because I do think that has been interesting pathway for, for both accessing the industry in general as a mom. <laughs> You're right about that. I'm going to get to the, the industry part in a little bit. So right now I'm just speaking to about consumers. Well, you know, I'm always excited, like Bianca, when the you know there are new states that come on, especially when they do provide more um, opportunity just for the discussion. Right to to your point earlier, we just a lot of us are closeted and we're not interested um, in sharing our secret. Um, I know certainly as a woman of color, um, for a long time I was using cannabis in a closet um, and shopping from the legacy unregulated market. That's still always available. So I kind of, um, when I talk about access, I don't know if it's access specifically to cannabis because moms are able to find that trust. Um, but I think more so um, access to conversations about cannabis, maybe with their health professional, um, maybe talking about it with your gynecologist, right? Being able to talk specifically to certain products. I actually was really shocked. Um, there's a brand, Foria, that, that came up in conversation in in, um, in a doctor's office, in the waiting room area. So maybe my bag, of course, it said free my weed man and that might have set it off. But ultimately the fact that people even had a clue what I was talking about um, mainly is because that brand was now in a market that didn't exist a year prior. So I do see that there is growth. We are seeing more access to conversations. And I think they're critical um, because that's what ultimately is going to change it. Yes, a TikTok can also, because it can be a conversational conversation starter, but ultimately being in these places that we un, like we have unexpected conversations, certainly more access there. I'm still though alarmed because I'll be honest, I talk about this every week on um, Sirius, but uh, more than half of the Black population actually live in this country, live in states that you cannot access cannabis for medicinal purposes. You're still getting arrested for a joint. MPP released a, um, a recent report that highlighted the 19 states. And when you look at their percentage of um, Black people that live there, which essentially I'm also, I'm looking at Black moms that live there, it's very concerning. Um, 
Um, and then it doesn't surprise me that then these uh, populations are the sickest and the poorest. So we're still seeing an access issue primarily through the South, um, but because of the way our demographics of our, our, our states are, that is actually making it meaning less access for black and brown folks. And I'll say I, I'm starting to have survivor's remorse, right? I'm, I'm able to travel. I have that privilege. Um, I can certainly go any market I want. And I usually can find out if I'm not the legal, I'm certainly, you know, <laughs> able to find who the plug is. And there are many people that I've met as I traveled through Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, they will never leave that state in their lifetime, Black and Indigenous. And I do worry that we're, you know, telling a story, a dominant story in places like New York, and the media is starting to make it like it's accessible, but there are still so many of us that don't have access. Um, and so I, I I feel like a little bit of a mixed bag because it is very concerning when I travel um, just to, you know, testify. I also am always worried about being targeted even there. Um, but thankfully, my son is 18. So even though I may go to Mississippi to help moms who are being targeted, um, and I've definitely been questioned in a way that they would like to rope me in, I feel safer because they can't take him away from me. Um, so the access issue, it's like, it's a catch 22, celebrating in New York, but I, I do have a little bit of survivor's remorse because I know there's so many people who are suffering. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for, for mentioning that. And that's that's why I wanted to talk about this question because as the legal marketplace opens up, we just assume that means more access and it does not, it's not across the board at all. Um, C. Simone, do you wanna weigh in on this question? Uh, yeah, I mean, my answer to that is like, yes and no. <laughs> and I feel like Dashita has already uh, really put it all out there on the table. I mean, the one great thing for recreational states like California that I'm in, right? Um, access for moms for sure has improved. I love the delivery service drivers. Um, I don't have to leave my home to go to a dispensary with, you know, my kids going crazy in the other room or anything like that. I could literally order online uh, and have them deliver right to my door safely. And I feel like that's that's one of the best things for a mom <laughs> that has been developed in this industry. Um, you know, and there's also a lot of door to door education groups um, popping up programs, kind of like the Tupperware, uh, you know, scenario uh, that we are used to uh, and our moms are actually used to. I'm seeing a lot of that happen as well for recreational states. Um, that are legal where a lot of programs are being set up by moms in their home for Tupperware parties, but it's really cannabis education and cannabis sharing of products and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, to this answer, it's not black or white. I mean, because we have states that are still only medicinally legal and not recreational legal. Improvement for sure access has happened in recreational states, but not the other states. And there's still a big fear, just like Dashida mentioned, when you're traveling across state lines into these states that aren't uh, recognizing it. Uh, recreationally. Absolutely. Um, and actually on that topic, I didn't plan to ask you this, but C. Simone, do you want to, uh, on the topic of access, do you want to talk really briefly about um, your project on translating a guide, a cannabis guide? Uh, yeah. I mean, um, I we just, myself and Eunice Kim, who is the, uh, the founder and CEO of HiBuy, which also is a, a community-based um, cannabis platform, a cannabis concierge, uh, we actually just released a book uh, translated in 11 Asian languages and has the English language included. It's a simple educational guide that really spawned off of our own personal challenges in the industry of trying to share the knowledge and plant medicine benefits to our Asian community, to the API community, you know, speaking to my mom, speaking to my aunts and things like that about, um, the difference between hemp and marijuana and the benefits that come from all these cannabinoids, the majors, the minors. Uh, we just launched it this month. Um, digitally, it's already available online. People can go and take a look. And it's uh, in a lot of great languages that will allow more access and inclusivity in the industry. Um, you know, one of the big projects that I'm working on is really um, internationally and speaking to countries that are coming online for legalization, especially countries like Thailand. And so it's important for us to, we have so much education here in the States, right? So much research, um, but in some of these countries, they don't even have the word for CBD or THC or uh, cannabis, cannabinoids. And so how do you educate them if they don't even have the material and the research? And so we've taken very basic knowledge, like 
Cannabis 101, uh, translated into multiple languages and um, is sharing it amongst the community. It's, it's being um, shared by so many different AAPI brands. There's over 45 different women also highlighted as part of the campaign who are in the industry. Also, some are even moms as well, doing their own thing, leading the way. And uh, this is all part of like everyone's part to do their advocacy work, uh, providing better access, inclusive, and uh, that recently just launched. Excellent. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much, C. Simone. That was really cool that we got to hear about that project. Um, okay. We have uh, a few more minutes and I have three more questions. So we'll try to, we'll try to bump through this um, really quickly. So, um, I mean, not quickly, I, but we'll, we'll, we'll cover as much as we can. So, Dashita, I wanted to get to the industry side of things. Um, as as you mentioned just a little bit earlier, do, do we know anything? I actually Googled like something like um, mothers working in the cannabis industry, and I came up with three results. Um, <laughs> You know, like as a full phrase. So obviously there might be other articles that, you know, allude to it, but there's not a lot of information yet out there. Um, do, do we have any sense? I mean, obviously women have dropped out of the cannabis industry in some numbers in, the, in recent years. And part of that is very much due to the pandemic. Part of that is due to just, you know, the volatility of the cannabis industry. Um, but do you know anything about, you know, mothers participation in the industry specifically? Are there statistics out there? Um, and, you know, is it hard for moms to participate in this industry? I don't have any uh, statistics and I love data. So trust me, I have certainly <laughs> been looking on uh, what I will say is anecdotally, I find that mothers have a much better path in the industry through entrepreneurship um, and working on their own. Um, I, I have definitely uh, chatted with enough people who have gone inside um, the corporate cannabis, if you will. Um, even they in legal markets struggle with proper benefits. There are things that as a mom that in a family you kind of worry about that may be someone who is single. Um, and yes, single people need health insurance too, by the way, I should say. But I think it's just a little bit easier for you to say, I'll go without um, before you, you know, put that risk on your family, especially especially if you're a single mom. Uh, so I, I personally have, uh, you know, mostly been an entrepreneur until I started working for the government. And that probably is the safest place for a mom to make that transition. Uh, the right government, of course, I'm in progressive uh, Portland. Uh, but I, I, I found that the pathway in has been entrepreneurship. Now, whether you can stay is about funding and ultimately women in general, and even I still think there's a stigma against moms and people who want to uh, take care of family and business are not getting funded. I've actually been in the room with private equity guys, literal, <laughs> that's what I call them guys. I, they didn't know much about cannabis, but they were moving money. And the commentary after seeing some of the brands that I actually respect that still exist today uh, compared to the way that they had commentary against some of the other brands, some of which do not exist today, was quite funny. And a lot of what she was doing and it, um, how many kids does, does she have? It's still a challenge. So I, you know, I think uh, we have to make those spaces for each other. I, I was just saying earlier that I almost rarely will uh, turn down an opportunity to do a one-on-one -on -one, um, with a woman, especially a woman of color, and then especially a mom. To be honest, I, I feel like we have to push our hand out to say, "Hey, this is the way I did it. These are the connections I have. You, you still got to forge your way." Um, but the industry right now is still pretty challenging if you have a family. Absolutely. And I know that we could keep talking about this so much longer, but I do want to get to the other questions. But, you know, we, we do talk in, in Clubhouse pretty frequently about the challenges that can a mom entrepreneurs face. And, um, you know, th th there are a lot of them, but it's also a pretty exciting area for so many of us. Um, so it's a mixed bag, I think. All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about pregnancy, breastfeeding and cannabis. And I'll go to you first, Bianca. Um, you know, the conversation it gets hot sometimes. You know, we have a lot to say about it in my in my DMs on Instagram. That's probably one of my most frequently asked questions. And I'm pretty sure that's true for you, too. So like what do you know, what, what is this recent what's the recent conversation like around cannabis, pregnancy and breastfeeding? Was that going to me? Okay. <laughs> Sorry, you froze for a second there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the recent research and I would say the recent 
sentiment is that we are getting stronger in our confidence as mothers to empower others to be confident in making smart choices for themselves. And that's what I think this movement is really doing because we do not have the solid research yet. It's like, we'll get one research study going one direction saying it's safe. And then we'll have another one saying it's not safe. But I just saw a Tylenol lawsuit that if you took Tylenol while you were pregnant, that you can, you know, be part of this class action suit to get money from Tylenol for your kid getting ADHD. So there are risks with everything and we have to make smart choices for our bodies and we have to take all the information we can possibly know and then we have to make the smart choice for ourselves. and a lot more moms are getting more comfortable doing something that is natural as an alternative to taking pharmaceuticals and that boost in confidence is a general sentiment that's happening because we are voicing that what we know to um to like be the opposite uh, opposing sector against the mainstream media that's trying to create this fear because there's no there hasn't been any data that is a solid oh my gosh we should be scared it's not there we're we are being cautious and this cautiousness is not serving anyone well we have a plant it can do amazing things it can be abused just like anything else <laughs> you know, there is a extent of maybe too much but we're trying to advocate for intentional use and we do that by amplifying our voices and all like helping to create a space where moms feel safe consuming and i say this with so much caution because everyone needs to do their own research and especially Mothers of color need to use caution because they are being targeted. I know for a fact, I've heard it too many times. We're not denying that. If you are a mother of color, use caution. We are not there as a society yet, unfortunately. And that's what some of us that have the privilege and have a voice and have a platform are advocating to raise awareness of this discrimination that's happening in the hospital while you're giving birth at the most critical time where you are at your most vulnerable. And there is I, the best quote ever that I cannot remember where I heard it. Maybe it's from Danielle um, interviewing a bunch of people, but that the most damaging part of CPS intervention is the on the mother's mental state. Like that's what the harm that they're doing. That's the biggest harm that cannabis is causing is to that mother's mental stability. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, and I hear your passion behind this because this is something that we talk about with women all the time, pretty much every day. And there are so many possible ways I think that women and moms could turn to cannabis for natural solutions in these really challenging moments, but there's still so much we don't know as, as we've, we've said, and you know, doctors and midwives are not on board yet for the most part. So, you know, but this conversation is moving forward and we're having it. And there's a lot of anecdotal stuff going on around this subject. So I think it's it's a really fascinating area that we're going to keep our eyes on. All right. We got to wrap up really, really soon, but I wanted to get in a last little something about, um, you know, how do we move this forward? Um, so if, 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 if all of you, if each of you would mind, wouldn't mind just maybe 30 seconds, like how do we move forward as a movement? Where do we go from here? You know, next steps, big vision. Would you like to go first, Tashita? Sure. Um, I'm actually working on an op-ed that I've been working on forever, it feels like now, but I just really think we have to tell the truth about cannabis to our kids. Um, let's start, you know, with undoing some of this damage by ensuring that our kids, I don't think it's my 18 year old kid, by the way, I think it's the, the 10 and under have a different relationship with the plan. Let our generation and maybe generation Z, like my son, 18 to 25, let that be the last generation that is still very ignorant about the plan, um, and subjected to the stereotypes, um, as their first experience. Um, and if you have a kid that's 12 and older, sorry to tell you, but 
that is already happening. And so just tell the truth about the plant to your children, teach them, and don't be afraid for them to teach their friends. It's not like telling them Santa's not real. I actually think that's more of an infraction than telling them that cannabis is medicine. You're here, thank you. See Simone. I couldn't agree more with Dashita. Just be open and transparent about it. I think um, as moms who consume, let's lead by example to, right? How do we teach others to have a healthy relationship with the plant um, like we do? And that's like show, leading by example, that's educating, that's doing our part in the community and whatnot. Um, I mean, let's make it wine, let's make weed mom. Somebody even already said that in the comments. Let's weed, make weed mom as normal as wine mom, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Bianca, last word to you. Yes. Um, yes. So I want to reiterate the importance of the community and how as we grow more confident as individuals, our voices spread and every single person out there, whether you have a social media platform that you're openly sharing or whether you're sharing it with your mother-in-law or your person you bumped in from to school you know, at the soccer practice, whoever you're sharing with, you can make a difference and you can be that special person that they feel comfortable and confident confiding in their use and you can give them confidence. So you have the power to make a difference. Every single one of you can make a difference and then they can make a difference and then they can make a difference. So as this community grows, our voices just get stronger. So please don't doubt yourself and don't second guess yourself. If you feel like you want to share cannabis and your experience with someone, do it because it can make a difference for them. Awesome. Thank you. That's a great way to end. And I want to just extend my sincere heartfelt thanks to the three of you for being here and for sharing your really interesting perspectives with us and, um, and with the community. Yay, Cannamongs. <laughs> All right. See everybody in the next sessions. Bye. Pick up your weed mom book. <laughs> <laughs> it has all the info in it. it Thank, you, Danielle. Thank you so much. Okay. How do we wrap? Boom. We're wrapping. <laughs> I love this. Weed moms. <laughs> wow. Ladies, thank you, all four of you. I learned so much. I think my takeaway from that is a little bit from everyone leading by example, can a moms empower other moms to make their own decisions, um, which leads to normalization. Um, and that's what we want to do. Um, and like Bianca said, empowering each other with this community, um, is it's just feels so amazing. Thank you so much for um, sharing everything with us ladies. Up next, moving on, we are gonna be welcoming, welcoming back our presenting sponsor, Sweet Jane Magazine to the sta stage. And they're gonna be sharing tips on how to um, become a cannabis journalist. Uh, before we bring them back, our sessions inside the event are starting. Bridges, a courageous conversation about race, equity, and inclusion, the unique journey of black canna moms, and navigating the cannabis and social media world with the Mommy Jane. If you want to join those live conversations, head over to the sessions tab inside the event on the left. Everything is being recorded today, but you can only interact with the community inside this event. So you are watching live from one of our social media accounts. You can RSVP for free at tokativity.com slash events. All right, so here to the main stage, I'd like to introduce you to our next guest who will be sharing uh, with us how to become the cannabis journalist. Katie Isben is the founder and publisher of Sweet Jane Magazine. As a magazine media professional with over 15 years of ex experience in publishing, she has a passion for the creation of magazines and storytelling, especially with the topics of parenting and cannabis. She has served as the founder and editor of several cannabis-based city regional magazines. Since launching Sweet Jane, she has found herself advocating for legalization 
in the state of Kansas, as well as protecting or protections for families who work with or consume cannabis, as seen in this forthcoming Sweet Jane Guide to CPS. Her business partner, Barbara Platt, has more than a decade of experience in journalism, working in different forms of media from public radio to podcasts to newspapers and magazines. She's won awards for her work as a columnist in, for Aspen Times and currently works for the editor for Lunch Ticket, a literacy and art journal dedicated to issues of social, economic, and environmental justice. She is currently pursuing her MFA for creative nonfiction writing at Anatot University. Barbara was raised in Boulder, Colorado, and had um, excuse me, and has watched the medical and recreational cannabis scenes blossom across the state over the past decade. She recently moved back to Boulder after a stint in Los Angeles and is thrilled to be working as an editor in chief of Sweet Jane Mag. Please welcome Katie Isman and Barbara Platts. Hi, thank you. Hi. Oh, you're very welcome. Uh, this time I'm going to leave the stage and let you ladies uh, teach us something. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Well, before we start, um, we just wanted to commend that amazing panel. Um, everything that was discussed there is so critical, so important, and um, so much of our shared interest in terms of why we publish Sweet Jane magazine, right? Totally. Yeah. So to kind of kick this off, Barbara, why did you get into journalism? <laughs> well, Katie, uh, <laughs> we didn't practice this. Don't worry. <laughs> no, it's funny because you, you know, you, you asked me the question and um, it's such a myriad of things. I started in high school in a, in the yearbook. I didn't even work mm -hmm. for the newspaper and I just loved like how, like, getting doing the yearbook got me involved in a community and taught me so much about that community and then i went to college we both did we both studied journalism um mm -hmm. and it it teaches you so much about um you know the media these days gets so so much flack for everything um oh my gosh but it's it, it teaches you that really what goes into a journalistic story and the importance of it. Mm -hmm. And when I did a column and um, when I lived in Aspen for a little bit, people would come up to me or I, you know, I did a story and they'd be like, wow, like, thanks for sharing that. And I think it's, yeah. I think it's overall just like the power of writing and communication and it, it, it can be so powerful and it can make people feel less alone and it can make people feel like valued. And totally. I, that's, that's why I think I got into it. It's just like, it's it's necessary in our world as, as much um, as, as difficult as it can be sometimes. <laughs> so true, so true. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I asked Barbara that question because a lot of what we do is focused on making sure people can trust information around cannabis. Um, there's so much more around the plant now. It's stronger. It, uh, there's more risk involved, as we just learned from our previous panel. And where do we go to find that information? And that's ultimately why we started Sweet Jean. Was... Exactly. Because, you, yes, there are your, your top publications, your New York Times, mm -hmm. your Forbes that are reporting on this. But sometimes it might feel a little removed. It's, totally. it's not always people that, that know a lot about the industry or they're just doing a basic hard news stories. So we felt the need that, to be a voice, but not, not just not an advocate. Uh, not an advocate, but but also an objective yes. voice. An objective, balanced voice is what Barbara's saying. And that's what we want to share with you. So before we kind of get started into the, the inside baseball, so to speak, um, inside weed, inside bong, whatever you want to call it, um, a lot of what we focus on is making sure that you have information that you can trust. And for a lot of women, getting a freelance opportunity with a publication to write it's a big deal. And it is an opportunity to not only get into the cannabis industry, if you are sitting on the sidelines as a general consumer or a new consumer, but you're curious. And so you want to cover it to learn more for yourself. But also because for a lot of moms who are home with their children and maybe not working right now and missing that opportunity, having some freelance assignments can be just the difference that you need to still feel part of something. And we get that. So at Sweet Jane, one of the really neat things is that we mostly work with women. And a lot of our contractors are also moms who are working yeah. from home. So we yeah. take great shout time. out to Leah. We see your comments. Yes. <laughs> and also, please feel free to have any com comments or hey, if you disagree with something, put it in the chat. Let us know. We're like, we're open for a discussion here. 
Totally. So I'm going to hand it over to Barbara, who's going to talk a little bit more about the nitty gritty about being a quality cannabis journalist. And then uh, we'll wrap up with some tips on how to get involved. <laughs> well, you can throw in anything here, but uh, you know, um, I think what's important, it's, uh, you know, um, our in the media landscape is changing, as I think we all know. Uh, and I think part of the reason is we're dealing with very serious issues uh, that, you know, there's been um there's been a war on facts. There's been a war on there. Suddenly a lot of journalists are coming out of the woodwork and saying, I can't be non-biased, unbiased anymore. I have to advocate because that's the only way I feel I can get anything done. And I think cannabis is in that space in a lot of ways. Uh, we spent a long time uh, dealing with the segmentation of this uh, segmentation of this plant. And we feel the need to shout it from the rooftops about how important it is. And I think that is important, but totally vital. But I think one thing Sweet Jane tries to do is um, cut through the noise on both sides um, and really just provide the facts and provide the studies and provide the information we can on both sides. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it's, um, and I think another side of that is because we're, you know, we, we're all here, we're in a like-minded group. We, a lot of us believe the same things. We understand what the struggles are, but how are we going to get other people? on the side, uh, you know, or to let them know. Right. The other yeah. moms who yeah. are part of the community, like Danielle yeah. was saying on social media. Yeah. yeah. Or like the grandmother who has arthritis pain and like doesn't know how to fix it or the, Correct. like there's so much. And, and part of that is bridging gaps. And, and I think we both believe, and maybe that's the journalism nerds in us, but we both believe that that, <laughs> that like that comes through information and it comes through often non unbiased information. Correct. Yeah. So there. So I think that's good to know. And if you are a writer and you're interested, I think it's important to know what what your goal is with it. Um, you know, you can be a cannabis advocate, and there are publications that are want you to, to advocate in your in your topics. They want to give your opinions. We like that too. We like that. We call them editorials. We call them columns. Um, we appreciate opinions. Uh, but I think when you're looking at writing. Uh, for a publication, spend some time looking at the stories they post. Look at the stories they highlight on their front page. Uh, you know, talk with the editor or whoever the the assign the producer or whoever's assigning you the story or whoever you've pitched to, and really see um, what they want. What, what how many sources they want you to interview? Uh, because I think every publication wants something different, and it's important to know that going into it. Mm -hmm. Do we get? Do we have any questions? No, I mean, no, uh, Sabrina and Adriana, thank you for commenting. <laughs> we'll keep going. Keep going, though, if you have questions. I'll be watching it yeah. while Barbara talks. Um, but, you know, we, we do both. Like, you know, Leah in this last issue, Leah Mar, she, uh, she published we, uh, one you'll have to get, sweetjmag.com. But she did a wonderful story about uh, parenting while high and what that, how cannabis has personally helped her um, be a better parent. She also did a story that was like a little more objective and it was looking at some of the cannabis moms, the canna moms who are advocating. Um, right. And so it's, it's, you know, there, there are different kinds of stories and there's a place for everything, but I, I guess I would advocate that there, there needs to be a place for that information that, Hey, we're putting the information, we're putting this in front of you and you need to make your own decisions. Just like Bianca and every, you know, the whole panel was saying, about yeah. cannabis and pregnancy. It's like our hot button issue right now, right? And, and we have a story in issue three about pregnancy where we actually talk to not only scientists and an integrated MD and it's mixed bag, just like Danielle was saying, like we're getting mixed views and we're gonna give you the information of both views so you can make a decision for yourself. That's journalism, that's exactly. balanced journalism, yeah. Yeah, Katie worked on that story. She did an amazing job. <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it's it, because you have to, and, and I guess, unfortunately, with cannabis, too, it's we haven't been able to get a lot of the information on it. You know, we know the things that alcohol to an extent. We know what alcohol does to us. We know what Tylenol does to us. We know, but we don't have the study. So it's we're, we're learning this all as we go. But I think it's important to to share that information. Hey, we don't know. We don't have the answer. But here's what we do know. Uh, yeah, you're good. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think that. I, and I think, um, I mean, I don't know if you want to talk a little about kind of just the tips on how to get into the industry and what that involves. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, obviously a lot of what we're saying is is part of being a quality journalist is, is finding the balance. And 
if we're looking for writers, we're going to encourage you to, to pitch us a story that may seem uncomfortable or unfavorable sometimes. We know, especially in a group like this, we're all pro cannabis. Like we both toked, we're, we have kids, I have kids, she has fur babies, you know, like obviously there's a reason for us to be here and find this community. But we also see the value of making sure you know the other side. Sweet Jane is here to help you make decisions, not tell you what to do. And so when we look at stories and when we're working with writers or other contractors who might have an idea for us, um, the biggest thing we're looking for is that objectivity to begin with, right? And so when you bring a story idea to us, we want to make sure that you have some potential sources to work with that are on both sides of the issue. Um, obviously, a very short condensed summary of what you want that story to be. Don't feel like you have to send the whole manuscript. We don't need that. We want to make sure to commission you and pay you accordingly when we get to that point. And most editors are that way. Um, so I'll backtrack just a little bit. Once you have your idea and you've put it into kind of a concise presentation, email the editor. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to lose. The worst thing that could happen is they say we're not interested. But um, in my entire career working with freelance writers, it was always just, if you can get enough confidence to push send, chances are that editor is going to be grateful for the story idea because we're busy. We're doing a lot. We're editing, we're managing, we're um, admining a lot of what's going on that when a quality writer comes to us with a really killer story idea, chances are we're going to jump right on it. And even if not, you've now introduced yourself. And if a story comes up, that's right for your portfolio, then we're going to reach out to you again. Yeah. And, but yeah, I think that's it, half the battle is just, is just doing the pitch and the pitch can be short and sweet. Totally. It, it can be, I mean, give us like three to five sentences. Like, you know, it's not, doesn't need to be a big thing. Don't write the story beforehand. Um, you know, there, I know there, you know, if you're submitting a book, you know, you, you generally have to have a full manuscript with articles. You don't need that. Danielle would know about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need that with articles. We just want the idea and then they'll hopefully work a little back and forth with you. Mm hmm uh, you know, I think social media is also a good tool. You can, totally. you can follow these editors, you can follow the publications, see what they're Slide posting. into their DMs. Yeah. Like don't, nothing to lose. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, um, there's a lot of ways and you know, not, not every editor always has their email right available online, but usually you can do a little digging. They usually have a pitch section in on our website, letting you know, here, here's how you, here's how you write, here's how you pitch. They'll, they'll give you some direction typically. Um, and yeah, I think, sorry, I'm just looking at our chat. Oh, do we have questions? Are there specific ed educational requirements needed to be? No. Do you smoke weed? Are you interested? Have you um, dabbled in writing or do you feel confident kind of when we talk to you about what we want the scope of the assignment to be? That's great. Like Barbara, as our editor, will reach out to you, have conversations with you, talk to you about your idea, how to kind of proceed with it. Um, and a lot of you know, just kind of direction. Like we're all in this together and we all have a story to tell and we all know of stories. I think my husband made fun of me once where I said, I see life in stories. And if you are a writer, that is kind of how you operate a little <laughs> bit. Something is always clicking for you where you want to learn more. And, you know, Sweet Chain really was born out of me wanting to learn more. So if you're curious about a topic, then don't hesitate to pitch yeah. us about it. And I would even say like, you don't, you don't even have to smoke weed if you want to, if you want to be right for us, you know, it's not, um, I mean, you don't even have to be a woman, you know, we, we have some male writers with some male photographers. It's, uh, I think it's, it's a keen interest. Let us know, tell us what, what you want to write about, tell us what you're interested in and we'll work through it with you. I mean, I think also it's, we're, we're here to like amplify female voices and we're, it, even if you don't have a ton of experience, like come talk to us. Like we'll, yeah. we would love to work with you. We want to hear your experience and your point of view and see what we can work on together. There's a large, um, I think, takeaway from the last session, too, about how talking about it, us being the leading example, helps normalize it for others. And, you know, as a writer um, for any cannabis outlet, media outlet, that's the same thing. You're getting the opportunity to help normalize a plant because you're doing the research, you're talking to people, you're sharing the fact that you've drafted and published this story with others. That is a form of normalization. And we are obviously very supportive of that. There's one for you in there, Katie. Uh, what's it like to start your own publication? How much time do you have? Um, <laughs> it's, it's an endeavor, but the very cool thing about this space, and it's something I've always said with cannabis, is because we're still a growing, emerging industry, the barrier to entry is low. 
Um, as the women pointed out in the last session, funding obviously is a huge, um, a huge barrier. I was fortunate to self-fund how I started Sweet Jane, um, but not everybody else has that opportunity. And so that's kind of a big, big component of starting, I think, any brand in cannabis, not just a media brand, but like all things where there's a will, there's a way. And if I hadn't been struggling to find quality information during my pregnancy and wondering what my level of consumption would be safe, there wouldn't be a sweet chain. So, you know, everything is, there's a tipping point and you'll find yours and don't be afraid. Like, and we are more than happy to visit with anybody who's interested in starting a publication and share any kind of support that we can give you. Yes. And um, what does short mean when submitting? Uh, that's a great question. I'll let you take that well, one. Well, and Diana brings up a good point. Um, and Helix, we are. Um, we just saw your question. Where are y'all reading questions from? Uh, just the <laughs> comments section. Uh, so keep posting there. Uh, Diana brings up a good point. She is also one of our writers. Has a few stories coming out in next issue. Uh, but yeah, 250 words. I think is good. I mean, let us know the story. Let us know what you want to cover. Uh, if you can provide a couple sources you want to talk to. It's not necessary. You know, we can help you find sources as well. Uh, but I think just overall, what's the vision? Um, and uh, yeah, and, and what, uh, what do you want, what do you want to cover in it? And that's generally good. Let us know a little about you, you know, just, uh, and then, you know, send us any necessary links. And I think that, that's generally a good way to go. Yeah. So one really cool thing about, again, where we're at and covering cannabis is the consumer still has to weed through what is content marketing and what is useful information. And so there's a really there's really like a, uh, we're giving a call to action right now to say, if you have a critical story, you know, um, a story that is going to help other people understand their, their consumption, their role in the industry, what is safe, what is risky. Um, we want to hear about that because that's the kind of stuff that brands who tend to, you know, lean on content marketing aren't necessarily sharing. We are seeing more education in the industry, and that's huge. Um, it's it's more than it was when we started Sweet Jane. And any ounce of education is helpful to a consumer potentially finding whatever their sweet spot is with their cannabis consumption. We support that. Um, but we also know that it's not all positive. And we want to, you know, for example, we have a really great story in the next issue about the discrepancies in child care. Like a lot of mothers who want to work in this industry, I think Dashita kind of touched on it. Like it's really hard to be a parent and get into this industry. And a large part of that is like we don't have companies that are offering any subsidies for childcare or even on-site childcare because that's so against the legalities of how a license may function. And that's kind of keeping a lot of mothers out and that shouldn't be the case. So we're helping to expose things like that. So we run the gamut from a good editorial to a good expose and we want everything in between. So if you have ideas, come, we are ready to hear them. Totally, totally. We haven't had a question. Um, he like says, do you think cannabis prohibition related to, uh, do you think cannabis prohibition related to abortion? Because a woman would rather abort, especially early on versus having children taken away, being raped, possible at proper orphanage because THC in her system. Oh, Helix, that is an incredible question. Um, and I don't even know that it's one that we are qualified to answer. Um, I think there is an extremely unfortunate scenario in the safety of maternal health um, in, in making sure a mother is safe if she's decided to consume cannabis, um, much like Casey pointed out in her introduction to help her be healthy and well through her pregnancy versus you know, being faced with the risk of possible intervention from child protective services. Women are faced with an incredibly difficult choice um, at the beginning of their pregnancy on what they want to do with their cannabis consumption. And if there's one thing that I hope we can achieve as a, a group, a community, is that we can be loud enough that someday a woman won't have to be faced with that critical of a choice. Yeah. Um, let's see. I agree. I wrote that one. Nice. Diana. Okay. <laughs> so 
Um, you know, a few more tips. If you are, if you have written and dabbled in writing, we'd still love to hear from you. Barbara is an excellent editor who is not afraid to work with new writers. And oh, it's so fun. <laughs> of course, that's that gives us great pride if we're helping somebody achieve a dream that they've been looking to do because so many people like Tokativity have taken a chance on Sweet Jane to help us achieve our dreams. So um, yeah, don't be afraid. Please, Side note, please we reach are out. looking for some social media help. So if anyone oh, yes. is particularly savvy in the social media Thank realm, you. let us know. Editor at sweetjanemag.com is my uh, my email. <laughs> uh, or you can contact us through the website. Bianca, we're looking at you. We could use some social media help. But I mean, social media is such an extension of journalism in and of itself. It right? is. Yeah. And it has to be. Yeah. It, yeah. It's all writing, right? Just it is all writing. <laughs> so um, I don't know how much time we have left. I am looking to my tokativity professionals to give us some kind of indication, but um, we can keep talking. We can we keep did. talking. We'll, we'll keep going about this. So issue three is um, basically coming back from the printer on Monday. Yes. So we get to see it in physical form. Um, I think a lot of you have obviously given us some feedback, have been writers, are included, as I mentioned at the top of the um, introduction, are included in the magazine. But this is our parenting edition. So, so timely to what we're talking about right now. And maybe you can give everybody a little bit of a preview and I'll watch our questions. Yeah, um, we have we have a few different sections. You know, we have our well-being section. We have some features. Um, we do, oh, we have a whole <laughs> section on tough conversations. Uh, how do you enter the cannabis conversation with people that you love? Uh, and also, how do you talk to your children about cannabis? A big one. Um, and we kind of break it up by age and what age are most appropriate for which things. Uh, we have a feature on, child, like, like Katie mm -hmm. said, child mm -hmm. care uh, in the cannabis industry. We also are, um, we also uh, profile Miss Kindness Ramirez. Uh, she's one of our features and all the amazing work she's been doing, which I know we all know, but uh, Wow. Amazing, amazing human being. Uh, and Toy Hutchinson, she is the new CEO of Marijuana Policy Project. We got to talk with her about all she's doing. Uh, we didn't include this because it just happened after we went to print, but she just uh, addressed the UN the other day about canna global cannabis. Uh, this woman's making a ton of change in our industry and she's a canna mom. And uh, she told us a little about her story of how she talked to her kids about it for the first mm -hmm. time. Uh, we, you know, one story, um, that I felt was necessary, but it wasn't necessarily the best, uh, you know, best shining example of cannabis is that uh, a lot of teenagers right now are um, consuming concentrates because it's easier to, it doesn't smell as bad. Uh, they're, you know, consuming dabs in school. They're using vapes in school with concentrates and um, a lot of them are getting sick and ending up in the hospital and, and looking a little about some legislation that went in place in Colorado. Has that been successful? Is it a good idea? Uh, so just talking about different things like that, uh, we talk about, is it safe to give your kids CBD from a legal perspective? We look at the best, some of the best books, uh, Danielle, looking at you about um, <laughs> for, um, for parents on cannabis and also children's books mm -hmm. on what, uh, what kids. Miss kindness. <laughs> yes. On what, uh, teaching your kids about cannabis. Yes. We've got a range of, we have a whole resources section on things, you know, that, that, uh, parents consuming cannabis, parents in the industry might want to learn about. Uh, it's it's a full issue. I think, yeah. yeah. I think one of my favorite calls in preparing that resource section was talking to poison control. So if anybody's had the worst fear of their entire life or they think their child is inedible, you can safely call poison control. And so when we reached out to them kind of investigating this, they were so grateful. Get the word out. How can we help you? Um, it is a free and easy service that can put a parent's mind at ease pretty quickly. So it's amazing to kind of see some of these things come together. A couple of questions. Um, Helix, thank you for the continued feedback. I really encourage um, for those of you with questions on pregnancy to pick up issue three. Uh, again, we did some extensive, extensive reporting and research to really see where we're at right now on the pregnancy conversation. Um, the Summary is it's still a gray area. It's unfortunate, but there is more research happening, especially in Oregon, specifically at OSHU, where they're testing on primates. So what they can't test on humans, they're giving apes con 
consumption products and testing their babies and the fetuses and all of that kind of stuff. So we are getting closer, which is really exciting. We also talked to Dr. June Chin, who's an integrated medicine doctor who um, will prescribe cannabis to clients given certain um, uh, certain experiences that they've done to kind of get to the point where they feel comfortable using it. So pregnancy, we really encourage you to check out this piece. It is, you know, in our opinion, one of the more um, comprehensive and balanced looks at where we're at right now at that particular topic. Um, Diana also asked about what is helpful on photos. <clears throat> Obviously, we're a small independent publication, so we don't have the Condé Nast art department helping us. Although it would be lovely <laughs> if we did. If they want to help, we're <laughs> if open they, to I it. I mean, if anybody from Condé Nast is on, give me a call. Um, no, but it's it's important, I think, as a brand or as a source to just keep your, your headshots up to date in high resolution. Um, we print a magazine. Like, we're, we're kind of old school in that respect. And so we want to make sure that we have a really great, strong, high-res photo of you or your brand or your product to publish if we reach out to you. That doesn't mean that we don't also commission photographers. So if any of you are on the event right now, we do always want to work with photographers yes, as well across point. the country. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a photographer and you have um, a photo story idea that you want to pitch us, same rules apply. Don't be afraid to email the editor. Make it a short summary. Yeah. And I'm um, talking too long. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, and uh, I, you know, I think, I mean, sometimes I'm even like, you have a story about maybe something kind of obscure, like all right, we're talking about something with well-being with cannabis. And it's like, I just don't want to post another photo of a weed plant because everyone does it. But sometimes <laughs> yeah. I'll just like start Googling and look at stories and uh, what other stories are doing. And I'm not, I'm not saying copy them, but sometimes you just brainstorm different ideas. I mean, oh, sometimes 100%. things are posts, sometimes it's an mm -hmm. illustration. We also do, I mean, sometimes we take illustrations from online. Um, Absolutely. You know, it's, it is hard though. It's hard just to figure out exactly what works, but I think it's, um, but that's normalization, right? So once we kind of get to a point where people are taking more photos of themselves, whether you're an entrepreneur, a mom or whatnot, that's helping normalize. And we get the opportunity to republish those. Yeah. Right. But it's in it. High res is important. It's not as important for online. But, you know, most of our cameras, you know, most of our phones today, luckily, I take high res high images. Res. I think sometimes we we edit them. Like, you know, we, we add these filters, which is fine, but it's sometimes that makes it a little lower res or you send it and it makes Good it, point. but it's funny. I mean, it's even though we have all the technology, it's sometimes it's like, oh, we need a high res image. And people are like, what? This is the highest I have. So something to keep in mind, keep your photos on a drive. Um, you know, I think even, even if you have stock images too, like maybe you've spent a lot of time taking photos of, of yes. different products or different like people smoking weed. It's like, we love to look through those drives just for just general photos. Photos. We've actually done that. We've worked with influencers and said, do you have stock photography? And we will pay you to run that stock photography. So there's, you know, a few secrets to how the sausage is made. I hate that analogy, but I don't know how best to explain it <laughs> to kind of help you see how we put together a magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, again, having, having the ability to work with brands or people who have good photography certainly is a big help. Yep. Yeah. No. Um, maybe you want to talk about the next two issues that are coming out. The next two issues so we're not pitch. done this year. Yes. Yeah, so we, our next one, which will be out late August, mm -hmm. I believe is the how to issue. So we're looking at everything from how to smoke a bong, uh, mm -hmm. to, you know, how, um, you know, the, how to introduce cannabis in the bedroom, uh, products that might work, you know, to stimulate feelings or, you know, how does cannabis in general, maybe make you more intimate with your partner. Uh, we're looking, but we're also d diving into some other, you know, kind of deeper issues, how to make cannabis accessible. Uh, just because it's legal doesn't mean it's affordable. And yes, what are the issues true. with that? What are the obstacles? Uh, how, if you're someone that is, you know, trying to make ends meet and you, but you use cannabis as medicine, what are some strategies? So you mm -hmm. don't have to pay huge amounts. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, we're kind of looking for other stories too. It's just a basic, but, but the idea is how to. Uh, and we're going to cover some amazing women doing some amazing things and um, really how, you know, how to start a cannabis business from the ground up, how those kind of stories. Uh, and then our issue after that, which we're very excited about, uh, mostly because our husbands are writing it for us, is our <laughs> grow issue. We're going to do all um, we're, we're doing a whole piece, a whole issue on growing uh, growing cannabis and, and not just how to grow up, but, um, but what are some companies working on this, uh, mm -hmm. seed cultivation, genetics, looking at, uh, just 
you know, taking maybe, your own medicine. Yeah. yeah. Organic versus non-organic. What, mm -hmm. what are the, yeah, making your, you're making your own medicine. What, making, what goes into that? You know? Yeah. It's a big part of empowering mothers in this situation. And hopefully nobody feels that growing at home puts you back in that closet, but it gives you an opportunity to make your own medicine if you choose to. And I always like to say it can be just one plant. It doesn't have to be a ton, <laughs> yeah. but enough. We'll also be looking at, um, you know, a lot of the state's laws that are coming down right now, um, new legislation especially, is prohibiting grow at home. And so kind of how you can get behind your state representatives, senators to really help make things possible so that you, again, still have that freedom to make your own medicine. If you can grow tomatoes, you should be able to grow cannabis, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, okay, let's see. Some more questions here. What are your guidelines for stock photo submissions from influencers? Mm. I don't know. I mean, I think it's, um, you know, we, we high res, obviously. I, it's kind of let us know what you have. Uh, send us everything on a Google Drive or what you're willing to share. Let us know your rate per image. Uh, guidelines, uh, you know, sometimes we're going to want to know context, you know, if it's a post shot. Uh, we don't. So some of them are more illustration and that's okay. But, uh, but if it's more of a news photo, like, Hey, here's, here's a photo of a protest. Uh, then, then we're going to want to know what protest, what was the date? Uh, so sometimes we will ask more details. Uh, but in general, if you're, if you feel proud of your images, send them along and, um, so they, you know, we can't promise we're going to use them or have a place for them, but we certainly might. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we should add too, just because we have our print edition, we are also live online. So um, we have sweetjanemag.com uh, where eventually a lot of our content will end up from print editions, but the print editions are still a very exclusive thing, but we are always looking for story ideas. So don't feel confined to our parenting, how to, or grow at home issue. Totally. <laughs> don't, yeah. don't, don't. We have a column that the beautiful Lisa Snyder just started uh, yes. with uh, her talkativity. We're we're doing a monthly column with the Leaf mm -hmm. Four One One nurses. Uh, we have all kinds of content online, and, and and sometimes it's online, and then maybe we we update it and put it in a print issue. So it's but we're yeah we're open to both. We're open to anything. Um, you know, send us if you have a you know, contributor's note, an editorial. Uh, we love to hear from you. We love your opinions and your ideas. Uh, and I believe Desiree asked uh, upcoming oh. issues. Yes, you can find them on our website, by Sweet Jane, on our website. We also have some other goodies on there if you want to shop around. Right now we have issue one and two on sale. So if you want a full set, you can set yourself up with one. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's a really beautiful publication that we're obviously proud of. But a large part of it was that we wanted to create something that you felt like you could leave on your coffee table. And yeah. um, you'll see that that's absolutely the direction that we've gone, even though there's some heavy hitting content inside the covers. So I think that kind of is getting us close to our time. Barbara, just kind of to wrap up, what story are you working on right now that you're most excited about? Oh, well, I've been looking at this for a while. Um, I've talked recently, I talked a couple of months ago to Alice Moon and she I'm sure a lot of you know her. She's a very active in the cannabis community and uh, she works in communication. And she also is someone that's very vocal about uh, cannabis hypermesis syndrome. And uh, I'd love to tell you exactly what that is, but we don't really know. Uh, it's not even classified as a, an issue that people come into the hospital with, even though people are coming in. But from the basic understanding I've learned so far, it's some people, um, their bodies can't handle THC or they can't handle it in large amounts and they end up throwing up and they end up getting very sick. And I think it's not the shining light on cannabis. It's not, I know it's not what we're about. We want the plant to be all healing, but there are bad sides too. And it's important that we look at those because we don't want people throwing up all the time or we want people to be aware if they have a problem. And, uh, you know, she kind of shed a lot of light on it for me. Uh, and I'm, it's not necessarily a story about her, but she just kind of helped lead me to understand it more. And, and, so I've been working on that story um, and starting to talk with some medical professionals about what this is, what do we know, and how can we, how can we work to, uh, I don't know, just understand it more. 
That's awesome. Nicole, I love that you're teaching this. <laughs> oh, Nicole, we should talk. Call if, us, Nicole. <laughs> yes, message us on Instagram or um, hit me up on editor at sweetjanemag.com because uh, I'd love to talk with you. I'm just starting the story and I just need to understand everything because it's it's a big issue to wrap uh, my head around. I feel like for anyone, it's a big issue. So please let me know. And that's actually such a great segue, hopefully for Tokativity. Big issues in cannabis. Um, they all feel big at times, but hopefully together with this community, we can make them less big and more understanding around them. So we certainly appreciate the opportunity to share with you all how to, you know, reach out to any magazine, not just Sweet Jane. There's a lot of quality ones out there. Of course, you know, there's the Patriarch High Times, but it's nice to see a lot of independent female run magazines coming onto the scene, both local and national. And just don't be afraid, reach out to an editor and give them a chance. So yeah, any other specific questions about tips or how to get involved before we wrap up here? Feel free to throw it yeah, in. Looks like we got about one or two more minutes. Awesome. Helix, thank you so much for all of this great feedback that you're giving. Um, it just shows how passionate people are about pregnancy and cannabis and what propaganda there is around it. And I think, you know, they even said in the last session, so much of that topic is being able to empower yourself for your own health. And I guess at the end of the day, that's really being a mom in cannabis is taking care of your own health. And if you use cannabis to do that, more power to you. It's a really great space to be in. Yeah. So, yes. Well, thank you, Tokativity. This was wonderful. Thank you, everybody who attended. Um, again, sweetjanemag.com, issue three out now, pre-order. They'll be shipping next week. We're, yes, so, we're excited. so excited. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. And don't be afraid. Editor at sweetjanemag.com. Give yeah. us a shout. Bye, guys. I love that so much. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, don't be afraid. Send those stories. You've got nothing to lose. Um, great information. Uh, I I love everything that your magazine is doing. I have all your previous um, <laughs> issues, of course. I can't wait. I need to get on there and order number three. And cannot wait for your grower edition. <laughs> I've grown weed. Casey, it works. Talk. Yeah, <laughs> I could grow better weed. I know I can. But I want to hear your story, Casey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I look forward to all of that, ladies. Thank you again. Thank you, Thank you for um, helping us move forward this movement. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All right, we are wrapping up here, getting close to the end. But before we do some giveaways in just a few minutes, we have one more special guest we'd like to invite up here. Another awesome mom, Aria Light Lightgee, sorry, is the CEO and founder of The Mob Nation, a national alliance of mom-owned businesses. She's going to share with us a little about what Mob Nation is. Uh, P.S. We all get 20% off of those memberships. So, Aria, come on up. Hello. Hi. Hi, Casey. So good to see your beautiful face. It's been years. I know, but you're still as beautiful as ever. Wow. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Tell us about Mob Nation. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. First of all, this was the most amazing event. Like, Tokativity blew it out of the water. Like, we partner with so many different people across the nation and I've done so many virtual events and this has had to be the most intentional, well thought out, well executed virtual event I've ever been a part of. So <laughs> kudos to you guys. Um, yeah, but my name is Aria Lighty and I am the founder and CEO of The Mob Nation and we are the leading network of mom-owned businesses. We have thousands of mom-owned businesses tapped into our network nationwide and um, we feature the largest mom-owned business directory in the world and also a micro economy that passed $3.5 million between its members in 2021. So it's more important than ever to have this type of of network and community. And it just made sense to uh, partner for this Canon Mom Tokativity Social. Yes, absolutely. We love having you here. Um, you've been doing more in-person events, right? 
You yes, we just did a tour. Yeah, we're tipping our dipping our toes back in the water. We're not sure how it's all looking, but um, in addition to those um, in-person events, we also have 15 virtual events per month. Um, but we did hit Portland, and Sam was able to come and spread the word about Tokativity there. Uh, we have Honolulu, which is my um, hometown, and then we're also going to be in Vegas as well. So lots of exciting things. And then we have MobCon coming up, which is our annual conference. It's two days long, all for mom-owned businesses, a chance to get connection, education, and inspiration. And it's it's going to be so much fun in San Diego, California. I love that. And what's the date on that? September 24th and 25th. And we can find the information where? at themobnation.com. And that's where you can join. And we give Tokativity the exclusive discounts. All of the members, like you said, get 20% off of membership. And then you get access to the discounts on MobCon because we just love everything that Tokativity does, everything that you guys stand for. And we need these type of like rad people in our community. So come along. It's less than 80 bucks a month with your Tokativity discount. So you get to get added to that directory, you get um, discounts on the events. It's by Kiki. You never know it's going to be <laughs> happening in the background. <laughs> but you get discounts to all of our um, events and partner discounts and a lot of other fun um, benefits as well. I love that so much. MobCon sounds amazing. So uh, you're so inspiring. Thank you mm -hmm. for inspiring other women to uh, branch out and create businesses for themselves. Yes, definitely. And you don't have to be a mom owned business to support a mob, right? Like that's how we built this micro economy is really getting people to understand that if we get more money into the hands of more moms, then we can change the world, right? So communities like Tokativity, communities like the Mob Nation, as a collective, we can radically disrupt these systems. We can shift that wealth. We can shift the power and we can start voting with our dollars and showing up. So hell yes. It. Hell yes. I love that. <laughs> Aria, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sponsoring. And let's talk again soon. Yes, please. Thank you, guys. All right. I love that. Moms helping moms. All right. So next up is um, time for our giveaways. Uh, before we do that, I do want to mention, do me a favor, comment in the chat box. Uh, one thing that you're taking away from today's event, did you meet somebody that inspires you? I know you did because there are a lot of women here today. Did you have a new idea? Did you discover something new about yourself? Uh, share, us, uh, share with us in the comments. We're going to throw some of those up there. And before we get to give away, giveaways, one more huge thank you to our presenting sponsor, Sweet Jane Magazine, our brand partners, Kites, Sacred Gardens, Thrice, Kindleaf Pendleton, and Sensi Magazine for your support and dedication to the liberation of women through cannabis, Danielle Simone Brand, Weed Mom, High Society Mama, Society's Plants, Kun Pu, and the Weed Head and Company, Club Kindness, Vanguard Media Online, A Green Legacy, The Mommy Jane, Mob Nation, Front Row Travels, International Consulting Business Women's Association, Oaksterdam University, High Herstory, Oregon Cannabis Association, Women Leaders in Cannabis, Cannabis Travel Association, Women Employed in Cannabis, The Bluntness, The Cannamom Show, Liquid Culture, and Mary Jane's Women of Weed Film. Whew, that's a lot of people loving us. But last and not least, our community contributors, which anyone can do this at any time when you register for our events. April Becker Machio, Genesis Rita, Beryl Solomon, Presley Puffs, Diane Foote, and One Bud Senorita. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. If you want to sponsor one of our digital events, head over to tokativity.com slash events. Look for the event that you want to sponsor click register and select a logo or add link to the page. All right, let's take a look at the photo booth. 
I am going to share my screen. Bear with me while I press some buttons here. Hey, Casey, I'm going to join you. <laughs> Bring it. What's up? I've had such a fun time today, and I'm so inspired by all of you Canna moms who, like, do it all. Not only are you running businesses, but you're taking care of babies and humans and teenagers and and also trying to take care of yourselves at the same time. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's real. I'm like so incredibly inspired by all of you. And, um, thank you so much. Um, I see, here we go. We got our, our photo booth going on here. If you haven't taken a, a picture at the photo booth, you can do that. You can open up a new tab and do that while we're doing some of these giveaways. Um, and it's look at all these cute women. Heather all has got women. all of her products. Hey, I think if you yeah. refresh that, Casey, you'll see some more that came oh. in after Heather's. Well, let's do that. <laughs> well, maybe. Oh, now you've tricked me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I almost had it all. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. <clears throat> There's a few more. Hi, ladies. Yeah, looking good. Show us your products. Show us all your right. weed. Cute earrings. Got my weed crown on today. Mob Nation in the house. Woo. I love that bong, Lisa. Oh my god, I love this bong so much. I had some Barbary herbals. Um, oh, that's perfect. Up in here. I like to kind of like, it depends on what we're doing back here, but I like to stay sober while we're doing the event and then party afterwards. I won't be able to talk if I smoke, so I, I <laughs> yeah. took some time for the photo booth only. Kia, you're so hot. Bianca's have been fun. I'm loving this. Oh, look, Sam and her son, Carmine, they were um, at the airport today. So Sam, um, our other co-founder, joined us from behind the scenes. Yes, see, everybody is looking beautiful today. I had so much fun. I had so much fun, too. Um. All right, I don't know how to stop sharing, so you'll have okay, to. Okay, I'll, I'll remove your screen. <laughs> Thank I'm you. I'm charged back here. <laughs> um, um, all yeah. right, so I think we're up to the fun point of some giveaways. Do you want to do our first one? Yes. Okay. Let's see here. What do we got? Um, also, if anybody from HQ wants to join backstage, turn your camera on. I can see a couple of you back here and uh, I can add you on. So first of all, um, we want to do the announcement of the Glass Cardinal giveaway. This was $550 worth of CBD products. We did this giveaway on our social media. We decided to extend it to... Um, to our Canamom social to give y'all a chance to enter to win. Um, and I do have a winner and I don't have Kia's cool drum roll that she had last time, but we'll I'll just do a little. It was, yeah, it was easier with us. Oh, there we go. All right. The winner of the glass cardinal giveaway is Desiree Terrian. Congratulations. I've been seeing you around, bopping around the social and, um, and also on social media. So congratulations on winning the Glass Cardinal giveaway. Yeah, she's been a huge supporter to a lot of events. So I love seeing that. Yes, indeed. Um, okay, what's up next? What's All up next? All right. How about I take the next winner of the... Let's do our Tokativity gift cards. So okay. Tokativity, $100 gift certificate. Drum roll, please. Nicole Mamie Quinos. Oh, I butchered your last name, sister. I'm sorry. Nicole uh, right. Mamie Quinonos. Quinonos. $100 Doka Tiffany gift certificate that is good for memberships, sponsorships, and Lisa, something else. Um, you can buy anything that's basically on Token TV Connect. So anything, if you do membership upgrades, advertising, we do have uh, leaderboard ads um, that are good. It's like ten dollars for ten thousand impressions. We do get a lot of traffic to our website, so you definitely you could tap into that. We also have sponsorships. So some of those names that we read off, um, you could participate in an upcoming event and use that credit for those. All right, and then next up. 
we have our $50 winner, Alice Moon Dalen. We were talking about her today. That's perfect. Right. There's Your two name. different women you're talking about. So Alicia oh. Moon Dalen. Oh, it's Alicia. Alice I'm Moon. just, yeah. I can't read today, apparently. <laughs> no. I've been doing a lot of reading. You're doing great. You're doing great. <laughs> Um, Alicia, I just saw Moon and I was like, Alice, uh, great winner, $50, same thing, sponsorships, advertising, event tickets, we're super excited. All right, Yay. Lisa, do you want to do our travel gift card? Sure. Okay. So I just want to shout out Front Row Travels. This is a Black woman-owned travel agency that we just love so much, Um she specializes in if you're looking to travel, whether it's your yourself, your family, or make a group trip. She knows all the hot spots around the globe. And so if you're looking for cannabis-friendly travel, you definitely want to contact Front Row Travels. So um, thank you so much for sponsoring this giveaway. This giveaway is for a $300 travel gift card. And we will connect you with... Um, Ayana from Front Row Travels, and she can tell you all about how that works and what you can use it for. So the winner of the $300 travel gift card from Front Row Travels is Sabrina Rice. Congratulations, Sabrina. Appreciate you and all your participation in our events. We're always looking to see who's participating, who's activating, who's out there speaking up, and we see you and you become, I mean, everybody that's here is a part of the giveaways, but we definitely put, pay extra special attention to those who are engaging and speaking up. So know that next time and um, congratulations to all the winners. Yes. All right, so that pretty much wraps us up. Make sure to register for next month's event, Pride and Equity Tokativity Social, which is happening on Wednesday, June 15th. And you can register at tokativity.com slash events. We'll see you there. Also, thank you to all the Panda moms out there who are working so hard to break the stigma and help us normalize cannabis. We'll see you uh, online and uh, we can't wait to also just shout out. We're doing an in-person event here in Portland, Oregon. If you're in here in Oregon, um, we just announced this today. It's um, <clears throat> Rainbows and Roses and it's our first in-person event since February 2020. So hop on top of our uh, website and register at sliding scale starting at free we also have a couple of um, sponsorship opportunities for those who want to tap in and um, we miss you and we hope to see you in person so thanks again for participating and uh shout out to all the can moms love you we love you all bye